You know how web development has changed a lot over the years? Well, one of the biggest shifts happened thanks to AngularJS and its successor, Angular. My name is Daniel, and today we are going to break down what makes these two frameworks so different and why that matters for your projects. By the end of this video, you'll understand the key differences between AngularJS and Angular and know exactly when to use each one, whether you're working on an older app or planning something brand new. Guys, make sure you check out all the useful links in the description after watching this video. There might be some nice discounts there. Let's get into it. What is AngularJS? Let's start with AngularJS, folks. And this is where the history lesson gets interesting. AngularJS was the original framework that started this whole journey. It was released way back in 2010 by Google. And at the time, it was absolutely revolutionary. Guys, we're talking about a time when jQuery was keen and building complex web applications was a real pain in the neck. AngularJS brought something completely new to the table. It introduced the concept of extending HTML with custom directives and made two-way data binding mainstream. My friends, before it came to be, if you wanted to update something on your web page, when data changed, you had to write a bunch of manual code to make that happen. And then AngularJS came over and said, now nah, we'll handle that for you automatically. The framework is built entirely in JavaScript, and I mean good old vanilla JS, and it uses something called the Model View Controller Pattern, or MVC for short. And guys, this basically means it separates your data, your presentation, and your logic into different parts. This makes everything much more organized than the spaghetti code we used to write back in the day. One of the coolest features of the tech was its dependency injection system. It was one of the first JavaScript frameworks to really embrace this concept, making it super easy to manage dependencies between different parts of your application. This was huge for testing and keeping code maintainable, guys. The framework also introduced the concept of services and factories, which allowed developers to create reusable pieces of functionality that could be shared across the entire application. And let's not forget about directives. These were like custom HTML tags that you could create to extend the functionality of regular HTML. It was mind-blowing at the time, folks. The framework also had this thing called the digest cycle, which is how it kept track of changes in your data and updated the user interface accordingly. While this was incredibly powerful, it could also become a performance bottleneck if you weren't careful about how you structured your application. What is Angular? All right, guys, now let's talk about Angular. And when I say that, I am talking about the modern framework that we know today. Now, here's the thing that trips people up right away. This newer tech is actually a complete rewrite of the original AngularJS. Google basically took everything they learned from the original framework and said, you know what, let's start fresh and build something better. Angular was first released in 2016 and it's built using TypeScript. Now, folks, if you're not familiar with it, think of it as JavaScript's smarter, more organized cousin. It adds type safety and makes your code much more predictable and easier to debug. The cool thing about Angular is that while it's written in TypeScript, you can still use regular JavaScript if you want, but most developers prefer the former because it just makes everything smoother. One of the biggest things that sets this framework apart, my friends, is its component-based architecture. Everything in it revolves around components. Think of them as little building blocks that you can reuse throughout your application. Each component has its own template, styling, and logic, which makes your code super organized and maintainable. Angular also comes with dependency injection built right in, which is basically a fancy way of saying that it helps manage how different parts of your application talk to each other. This makes testing much easier and keeps your code nice and clean. Plus, folks, the framework has this amazing command line interface that basically does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Need to create a new component? It's got you covered. Want to build your app for production? It handles that too. Another thing that developers love about Angular is its powerful data binding. Guys, you can bind data in multiple directions, from your component to your template, from your template back to your component, or both ways at the same time. This makes creating dynamic, interactive user interfaces much more straightforward than doing everything manually. Hey, real quick before we move on, I want to give a shout out to this video's sponsor, Toxcare. So, my friends, we've talked a lot about AngularJS being out of support and how upgrading to Angular isn't always simple or quick. But what if you're just not ready to make that move yet? That's where Tuxcare's endless lifecycle support comes in. If you're still running the final version of AngularJS, Tuxcare lets you keep your app secure 
and stable without needing to rush into a full rewrite just to upgrade to the latest version. You'll still get security updates, compliance support and full compatibility while you plan your upgrade on your timeline. No forced re-architecture, no broken builds. And for those of you guys using Angular 16 or 17, ELS has your back too. Angular 16 is already out of support and Angular 17 is about to join it. But with Stuxcare, you'll keep getting updates, which means you can stay focused on your features without constantly chasing version bumps. So whether you're maintaining a legacy app or just need more time for a careful migration, Taxcare gives you the breathing room you need safely. You can learn more about Taxcare ELS at the link in the description. Seriously, guys, check it out if you're dealing with an upgrade headache. Thanks a lot to Taxcare for supporting me. All right, now back to the video. Angular JS versus Angular key differences. All right, my friends, this is where things get really interesting. And honestly, this is the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about today. The differences between these two frameworks are so significant that they are basically two completely different texts that just happen to share similar names. First off, guys, let's talk about the language. AngularJS is written in JavaScript, while Angular is built with TypeScript. Now, this might not seem like a huge deal, but it actually changes everything about how you write and structure your code. TypeScript brings static typing, better tooling support, and much better error catching during development. It's like having a really smart assistant that catches your mistakes before they become problems. The architecture is completely different too, folks. AngularJS uses the MVC pattern we talked about earlier, while Angular uses a component-based architecture. In AngularJS, you're thinking about controllers, views, and models. In Angular, everything is a component, and components can contain other components. It's a much more modular and reusable approach. Performance is another huge difference, my friends. Angular is significantly faster than AngularJS, especially for large applications. AngularJS uses something called dirty checking to keep track of changes, which can slow things down when you have a lot of data. Angular uses a much more efficient change detection strategy that only checks what actually needs to be checked. Mobile support is where Angular really shines compared to AngularJS, folks. The newer framework was built from the ground up with mobile in mind, while the original one was created back when mobile wasn't as big of a concern. Angular has much better touch support, better performance on mobile devices. It even has a companion framework called Ionic that makes building mobile apps super easy. The tooling ecosystem is night and day different, guys. Angular comes with the CLI, which is an incredibly powerful command line tool that handles everything from project creation to deployment. The older tech doesn't have anything like this built in, so you end up having to piece together different tools from the community. Testing is also much better in Angular, folks. The framework was designed with testing in mind from the very beginning, and the CLI even sets up testing infrastructure for you automatically. The original tech can be tested, but it requires much more manual setup and configuration. Guys, before we move on, I try to make my content fun instead of boring, and in return, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content I make. Use cases. Now, folks, let's talk about when you'd actually use each of these frameworks, my friends, because this is probably the most practical question you're asking right now. The answer really depends on what you're building and what your specific situation looks like. Let's start with AngularJS, guys. Now, here's the thing. Google officially ended long-term support for the framework at the end of 2021, which means no more updates, no more security patches, nothing. So if you're starting a brand new project today, you probably shouldn't be choosing AngularJS. However, folks, if you're working on an existing application powered by this tech, you might need to maintain it or gradually migrate it to something more modern. In fact, it can still be a reasonable choice if you're working on a small, simple application that doesn't need to be super performant or handle a lot of complex interactions. Maybe you're building a basic website with some interactive elements, or perhaps you're prototyping something quickly. But even in these cases, folks, you'd probably be better off with a more modern solution. Angular, on the other hand, is fantastic for large, complex applications that need to be maintainable and scalable. If you're building an enterprise application with lots of different features, complex data management, and multiple teams working on it, it is absolutely perfect. The framework really shines when you need strong typing, excellent tooling, and a well-structured architecture that can grow with your application. Angular is also great for applications that need to work well on both desktop and mobile devices, my friends. The framework's mobile-first approach means your app will perform well across different devices and screen sizes. 
Plus, if you need to build a companion mobile app later, you can use Ionic to create native feeling mobile applications. If you are working in a corporate environment where stability and long-term support are crucial, this framework is definitely the way to go, guys. Google actively maintains it with regular updates, security patches, and new features. There's also a huge ecosystem of third-party libraries and tools that work seamlessly with the tech for teams that are already familiar with object-oriented programming concepts and enjoy working with strongly typed languages. It just feels very natural. Folks, the TypeScript foundation means that developers coming from backgrounds in Java, C Sharp, or other typed languages can pick up the framework relatively quickly. Final thoughts. All right, so here are the final thoughts. If you're still working with AngularJS, just remember that it's an older framework that's no longer supported, so upgrading or migrating sooner rather than later is a smart move. But guys, if you're starting fresh or building something big and modern, Angular is definitely the better choice. Its TypeScript base, component structure, and solid tooling make development smoother and your app way more scalable. If you haven't tried Angular yet, I highly recommend giving it a shot, especially if you want to build apps that run great on both desktop and mobile. It really makes a difference once you get the hang of it. Now I want to hear from you. Which framework are you using currently? Have you faced any challenges with either? Drop your experiences and questions in the comments below and let's chat. Feel free to check out the links in the description below. You might find some discounts there. As usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time.